Hello and welcome to the Daily Debate Live Wednesday with Tagreed Hassan here on Nile TV International. Tonight we'll be uh, tackling more concerning the educational uh, file in Egypt. The New Republic uh, strives to prepare the qualified graduates through uh, the outstanding educational programs that are mainly based on knowledge and also uh, practical skills. And this comes uh, in accordance with international uh, professionalism standards and also quality levels. This aims in investing in the human capital and preparing the youth with a high level of awareness both uh, on the local level as well as the uh, global one. Well, in light of the political leadership belief in the important role that is played by uh, education today in order to combat uh, unemployment, which is a very important file today, and also extremism, as well as advancing the society and uh, the country, as we all know, is working on also investing uh, and building the human character, the Egyptian citizen, the human character. So Egypt established four state uh, non-profit universities with their surplus income uh, being re-injected annually uh, into the uh, university budget in uh, the following year. We have many new, new universities, new Mansoura, Al Alamin, uh, International University, uh, King Salman International University, the Galala University. Those are uh, among the new generation and the smart universities that uh, are in New Egypt uh, today, mainly aiming at uh, further being there in the global competition in the different uh, fields, especially of course science and uh, technological development. So uh, tonight we are going to tackle uh, this important uh, issue with Professor Dr. Ahmed Abd Tawab, uh, Professor at Munufeya uh, University. Together we'll read uh, the impact of the presence of those uh, universities on the local and the international levels. Dr. Ahmed, thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you, Tari, for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. And we'll be talking also innovation because uh, innovation is, going, is, of course, a key feature if we're talking about uh, education in New Egypt. Let's watch this report and uh, we will be back for further discussion of this topic. Higher education system drives Egypt's human capital development, economic growth and prosperity. Today in the New Republic, universities prepare students with the skills required by the global market and conduct researches solving market and development challenges, aiming to have the highly skilled workforce and innovation needed to drive its knowledge-based economy. The goals of Egypt's new education system are to provide education for all Egyptians and to pay attention to learning systems and outcomes in addition to improving the quality of the research and technological system as well as improving the competitiveness of education systems and outcomes locally, regionally and globally. The Egyptian government has identified higher education as a priority and is enacting a series of programs designed to make universities in the country more internationally competitive. In this regard, Egypt has upgraded its current public universities and established new state smart universities, which are King Salman International University, Galala University, El Alamein International University, New Mansoura University. State smart universities aim at global competition in the field of science, technology, and culture development preserving the Egyptian identity and strengthening ties with Arab and African countries by providing higher education that supports innovation and creates a generation capable of regional and global leadership. They also present a wide range of future-based programs specifically selected to serve the current and future global market needs and combat any forms of extremism. Egypt has managed in the past years to establish universities with world-class education standards through cooperation with international universities to bring a better future for its youth. Noteworthy to mention that President el-Sisi continuously stressed that Egypt is serious with confronting the challenges of education, which is the basis for building countries, and in that regard the nation will continue to fight for the provision of knowledge and education to all its citizens.
Uh, Dr. Ahmed, we're talking about developing education and uh, <coughs> Uh, thinking of uh, the new republic and the features of the new republic education wise uh, definitely we can find the word creativity we can find uh, the keyword also smart uh, right. in there right. uh, promoting education <coughs> definitely uh, will lead to uh, main the main progress and also uh, bearing into consideration Egypt's sustainable development goals right. and an interpretation of the Egyptian vision 2030 right um, that is, I think that this is something um, we used to talk about during the last few episodes together. Um, <clears throat> we've been talking about education because this is one of the strategic weapons that we have nowadays. Um, we are talking about ideological backgrounds of our new generations. We are talking about new republic. We are talking about building a new ground for the youngsters. So we are talking about a new vision for the country. This is what we are looking for. If we would like to build a nation, we should start by education. This is what a lot of leaders mentioned before. I quote your words that you mentioned a few minutes ago when you just um, said that it's all about the hope. Today, we should actually focus our attention on the hope, the hope to have um, new generations that can lead our country on the right track. Right. Today we are surrounded by different challenges. Mm -hmm. As you can see that a uh, few, few years ago, started two, two years ago, I think so, uh, coronavirus pandemic. And mm -hmm. then we have the challenge in Europe today, the war between Russia and Ukraine. And then we have today, globally speaking, the economic recession. Mm -hmm. So we are surrounded by challenges. There is no question about that. And we would like to provide, to inject, as you said, hope. Yeah. And so, when we talk about the hope, when we talk about education, when we talk about the challenges, then we can find a connection between the three elements. You mentioned that this is a long-term investment. It's absolutely right. We have today, by the way, we have different universities. And for me, as a professor working in different academic institutions in Egypt, I can just see um, what's happening on the ground nowadays. We have the civil universities, we have public universities, we have international universities. Mm -hmm. Egypt today is also putting a plan, a strategic plan, to bring international students and to make Egypt as a central place mm -hmm. and as a focused hub in Africa, in the Middle East. When I was in the United States, I used to say that Americans always claim that education is one of the strategic elements that we have for the country. Mm -hmm. Today, Egypt is doing the same. I understand that there are a lot of challenges that we are facing, but as you said, there should be a hope at the end of the tunnel. Definitely, because we are living with hope. Hope is uh, what we are working with and injecting in our new republic, in new right. Egypt. Right. Uh, we are working and the president is working day and night in order to provide <laughs> quality life for, for Egyptians. And among those priorities comes, of course, as we have seen uh, translated and interpreted in the different programs, namely healthcare, uh, Haya Karima, the Decent Life Initiative. Education, of course, is considered to be uh, one of the most important file and among the priorities, because usually when uh, the uh, citizens' level of awareness uh, has been the focus, this means that we are uh, a nation that believes in uh, in nation building, in right. building right. of the Egyptian character. Right. So right. Uh, if we talk about the correlation between uh, prioritizing <coughs> the educational file and uh, the notion of nation building. Right. I think that there is close connection between both mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. um, as we are talking about education, we are talking about education because this is the way to build the country, to build mm -hmm. our generation. Um, and I think that by having education, um, and by having such universities and different um, educational institutions nowadays, um, I always keep on saying that universities are the containers of knowledge. And by having such um, customized and unusual style of universities, then we can just find a, a, a not traditional way of conveying knowledge to the society, to the generations, and to make our investment in doing that. Um, we've been talking about how can we find a connection between the theory 
and the practice. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening today by having different programs. The situation today to read on the map is different from the past. Students today, if they would like to learn anything, they can go on a digitalized way to get what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. So the style of education should be different. It's in the same way as we used to talk about that before. Um, today, there is a plan to uh, digitalize all the electronic, all the systems, educational systems in the country. Um, we would like to find here a connection between what the students can take inside classes and what they have in the market um, on the global level. The requirements of the global Absolutely. market. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we would like to bridge the gap. We don't want it to have this connection between both, but mm -hmm. we would like to find a connection between both of them. And if we just find a strategy here for doing that, I think that will be very successful to build a new generation. Great, Dr. Ahmed. And taking from your words, uh, talking right. about uh, uh, the sense of digitization, right. digitizing <clears throat> Egypt, because this is uh, considered to be uh, the future if we're talking right. about the notion of nation building and right. also education, digitization is considered to be uh, the future. We are thinking <clears throat> smarter. Right. Uh, and going green. Right. So right. Uh, right. while we are also preparing for the uh, COP, which right. is considered to be the main headlines COP, right. 27 right. Uh, upcoming uh, important Congress that is marketing Egypt globally right. to the world. <clears throat> that is so how right. do you see that? How do you see this notion of yeah. uh, marketing the country right. through education? Okay. Well, uh, imagine that we have here an international event, COP27, which is supposed to be held in Egypt in Charmin Sheikh in November this year. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that would be remarkably a very strategic in marketing for the country. Last year it was in Glasgow, in mm -hmm. Scotland, as far as I remember. So if we just have such international event happening in our country, then all the global attention will be focused on Egypt. So this is what we are looking for. But let me just also get another point here, which is how can we make the best investment here um, for such event that will be uh, held in the country and how can we create that sense of mm. digital awareness for our students, for our new generation. This is extremely important. Mm -hmm. We've been talking to read about awareness and identity and ideology. And I guess that you probably might ask me if the three elements are involved together. Absolutely, yes. And I used to activate certain concepts with my students in order to provide them that sense of opti um, optimism, that sense of support, that sense of hope. So if we just have that, if they can find the role model um, in, in their lives, then I think that the situation will be different. I am very confident that Egypt uh, is always having that sense of human um, uh, wealth, if I can say so. And the reason here for that, when I was in the United States and I found a lot of Egyptian professors, a lot of Egyptian researchers and scientists, and they are working in different international, global, academic institutions, that means that still Egypt has a lot of, you know, um, um, wonderful human capital that can help to build the country at the end. Uh, definitely, and uh, we are actually working of unleashing this uh, sense right. of support right. and uh, this sense of, uh, you know, uh, utilizing the power of the youth and uh, the exploration. You know, the youth found themselves actually in New Egypt. Right. They found themselves uh, really present, uh, present through the, the sense of uh, uh, His Excellency, the President, providing uh, the example to follow suit by listening to the youth so they have been listened to. Right. Uh, also, uh, the interesting story is that they find also their ideas uh, right. implemented right. Right. and taken good care of. So how can we uh, utilize the youth ideas? And you at universities, as right. university professors, right. uh, have a great responsibility actually right. in that respect. Right. They look at their professor today in another different way. Mm -hmm. You are a role model to them. They are observing, they are analyzing, they can follow up what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sure that they are watching me now while talking. And I told them, you can just watch what I'm, what I'm going to talk about on TV today. We are talking today to read about youth because this is a sample of creativity, mm. dynamism. Uh, it's a sense of uh, progress. It's a sense of um, optimism. They are looking for the future. Mm 
-hmm. And this is what we are just trying to do. We would like to find here a connection between the past, the present, and the future. And I think that today that they have another different mechanism to deal with the challenges. Uh, today, probably all aspects in our lifetime are changing to be an electronic system. And so um, their way of expressing their ideas, of expressing themselves, can go online today. They can do that electronically. And so I think mm -hmm. that in this way, if we just have something like training, very specialized strategy and approaches, then we can just work together. They are looking for the support and the assistance. And look to what Dr. Ahmed Zouel said before, that we are trying to help the country by the new generation, because this is the only way just to build the country. It's not just all about the financial issues, it's not just about the cultural issues, but it's something more about the awareness as well. And we used to talk about awareness before, talking about the religious, the cultural, the social, um, the lifetime awareness as well. We would like to know what can help in order to formulate the awareness and the identity of the young people and in this way by having such a new style and a new system of education then we can just help the students to go for a better future for a prosperous society as well yes definitely the president always stresses the fact that he has absolute confidence in the youth right. and mm -hmm. this is very important that you feel that uh, the head of state is uh, right. trusting right. and investing in right. your uh, potential right. so uh, mm -hmm. the fact also that we do have uh, the assignment on behalf of uh, the president to the national youth conference to conduct the political dialogue right. with uh, all the parties right. uh, this definitely in, in fact is uh, we, we have here the youth political powers on the current priorities of the national action Right. Uh, for Egypt in the coming stage and uh, this is going to be the outcomes of this is going to be referred to the president personally right. so how mm -hmm. do you think this sense of dynamism in, right. the, in the political life in the country will definitely have a great impact and uh, also on the youth um, abs there is no question here about that mm -hmm. having that sense of dialogue because this is what you really need nowadays mm -hmm. uh, they need that sense of involvement they need that sense of a genuine partnership I do remember what has been said before. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do, I understand. So if we just have that sense of involvement, bringing the, the, uh, the youth and the youngsters and the new generation to be involved in that sense of the uh, decision-making process in mm. this way, we can just understand how important are such steps are such approaches which are taken by the government in order to bring all the uh, um, aspects in the Egyptian fabric together in order to sit together moving the country forward because this is the only way that we have. We should, among all the challenges that we have nowadays, we should stand unified, united, on a common ground. And I think that by having that sense of partnership, involvement, we can help the youth in order to get a better future for all of them. Uh, definitely helping the youth out also is on more than one level, right. uh, preparing them for the labor market right. as we were mm. talking and also uh, enabling them to restructure right. uh, uh, their, right. their career. Right. Uh, we're talking about uh, eight years of, uh, of hard work in Egypt facing many challenges. However, we're talking about building the new republic right. that requires right. definitely a very important criteria right. that uh, we were talking about injecting the hope. What right. is really also important <clears throat> is putting this hope and translating this vision into action. Right. The youth right. today of Egypt are part and parcel of uh, this great package of uh, injecting hope and drawing the features of our new republic. I, I, I believe so. And this is why that there is today a strategic plan in order to um, change, for example, the educational syllabi. Why do we make that in universities and schools? Because we would like to create that sense of high level of competitiveness. We would like to create a high level of transparency. We would like to find a connection between what's happening outside the country with what's going on inside the country. Mm -hmm. We would like, by having such international events, like, for example, the Youth Forum mm -hmm. or COP27, I think in this way we can just find that connection between both of them. 
we don't want it to be isolated for what's going on outside the country. Mm -hmm. And that's why today, when we just have a, a deep and a close look at the situation today in the Middle East, you can just find that sense of Egyptian involvement in different aspects. This is what we are looking for. We've been talking about the soft power of the country. Mm -hmm. One of the key elements and the basic pillar for mm -hmm. the soft power of the country is just to have such educated, fully aware young generations in Egyptian society, and that can be very helpful. Yes, uh, we are here before uh, like a flashback of one of the important sessions at uh, the World Youth Forum, SL Rais, or Ask the President session that has been very popular. And uh, uh, the, the idea when, when this session actually was launched was outstanding. And it was for yeah. the first time where uh, we have seen the youth of Egypt asking uh, His Excellency the President questions uh, directly right. uh, to him. Right. And uh, he answers with full transparency. Uh, this sense of blocking any sort of barriers uh, with right. the youth are right. very healthy. And yeah. uh, this is also what is happening at the National Training Academy right. uh, with its cadres and uh, preparing uh, the youth for leadership. Right. Um, as you said now, it's the direct dialogue between the decision makers and the youth that this is something very important. We are also working on having that sense of transparency in dealing with the challenges. Um, and this is why we are just changing the syllabi, we are changing the philosophy of education nowadays because we would like to make unusual, unusual generations um, um, in the upcoming years. We would like to find also that sense of creativity. Uh, we've been talking about innovation and the creativity that wouldn't happen unless we have that strategy of thinking outside the box mm -hmm. and if we just travel abroad is to see the egyptian involvement in different aspects we can just understand how important it is to focus on that sense and uh, of having direct and a very very close uh, conversation and dialogue between the leaders of the country and between uh, also the generations, especially the youth. Uh, definitely, we, we will be back and we're still talking about uh, this important issue, the education file and the features of education in the New Republic. Uh, Dr. Ahmed was talking about uh, thinking out of the box. We'll be uh, talking and thinking out of the box and exploring new ideas regarding this file uh, right after a short break. We'll be back. Uh, we're talking more about the educational file uh, this evening and uh, the president's initiative to build the Egyptian character, which is limitless. In that regard, Egypt has established uh, state universities uh, like New Mansoura, Al Alamein International University. Uh, we talked also about King Salman International University and Galala University. All those are considered to be smart uh, uh, universities. And we're, while talking digitization, digitizing the country, it was very important to have present uh, those international uh, universities going smart and, as I said, going green. So. Uh, linking right. uh, the uh, educational <coughs> file, Dr. Ahmed, with mm -hmm. the potential and uh, services uh, of the labor market is also a very important point because we are preparing the youth today to have jobs in the future. Right, right. This is extremely important uh, yeah. because today um, the concept and the notion of job opportunities mm -hmm. is different from the past. Yeah. Today you can work at your home. Mm -hmm. Today you can just find a job by just having a channel on YouTube. <laughs> today you can market yourself while you are sitting in your room. So mm -hmm. the situation today is different from the past. And because we have a new vision and we have a different strategy of job opportunities, today you can just find an international job opportunity while you are sitting in your home. So this is the point that we are looking for today. We would like to make our students, our generation, just to be able to cope, to deal, to adapt themselves uh, for having such a new perspective and a new approach. Um, one of the key elements, and probably that this is something that we used to talk about that before, it just um, how can we make the education to meet the requirements of the job market um, locally and globally as well. So yes. I think that, that this is the reason why we have today several universities. 
This is the reason why we have today international universities. Yes. This is the reason why we are expanding also the funding program to bring international students in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Today we have hundreds, if I may go and say thousands of students coming from different countries, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, from South America, to be educated in our country. Because at the end, we would like also to have a soft power. A new style of the soft power for this country is just to make people be educated in your country and then when they go back to their homelands, they will talk about Egypt. This is what we are talking about today. It's a new vision, it's a new style, creative, innovative and in a digitalized way. Uh, definitely. Investing in the youth ideas is very important, mm -hmm. how to right. invest in the youth ideas because uh, sometimes we find that the, the youth bring about ideas that would have never been on right, our right, minds. Right. And I guess you as professors right. can, can right. really uh, <coughs> uh, uh, like sense this right. during your right. lectures right. and some of the youth come up with a brilliant right. idea. Absolutely. So how can we like act as incubators, <coughs> let right. me say, right. Uh, right. and I mean this term, right. like uh, right. when you have an incubator, right. this is how you are like watching out for the plants to grow. <laughs> right. So uh, we, we're talking about uh, those ideas, right. those uh, fine plants, how can we make them grow for the future? Uh, let me just express my admiration for this word, incubators, because this mm -hmm. is the real meaning for what's happening today. Mm -hmm. And as you said, for me as a professor, um, um, inside the, uh, the academic institutions, um, one of the elements that I used to make is just to make uh, that sense of close connection between you as a professor and your students because you will see that sense of unusual amazing ideas and I just I used to make that like opening um, a free conversation with my students adjust to um, and I believe it or not I just can see that they are thinking in another different way and this is a sort of enjoyment for me when I just talk to them, when I just explore that they probably have something that I didn't know before. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, sometimes as a professor, I learn a lot from my students. Mm -hmm. So this is what we are just trying to do, to find that sense of networking with the generation, listening to them, trying to engage them, trying to help them to be also decision makers in our community. Yes, uh, definitely <coughs> a very important and a noble cause. We're talking about a, a, a generation who are putting innovation as a priority. We're right. talking about a generation that, uh, a generation who is thinking smart, right. Uh, right. actually. Uh, Egypt today has become educationally <coughs> a hub uh, and right. regionally and globally for uh, uh, education. Uh, definitely it reflects also on our ties <coughs> and outstanding partnerships with those countries, whether Arab or African. Right. Uh, there is no question here mm -hmm. about that. And as I said before, because this is part of the soft power of the country, yeah. then um, I do remember when um, one of the African leaders um, uh, when he made a visit uh, to Cairo, and I remember, uh, because I was responsible for the interpretation at that time, and I remember what he said, that he said exactly that I used to get my education here in this country, so when I came back again as a leader for my country, then I can just see how significant it is to learn something from Egypt and from Egyptians. Um, I think that you can also see that sense of um, pride outside the country when people sometimes look at the Egyptian civilization and Egyptian history with that sense of respect. I think that we need to focus on that. We would like, and we are working on that nowadays, which is building that sense of close relations. Egypt is uh, always a country of respecting, welcoming, and educating, and providing help. This is what it does it mean to say Egypt at the end. Yes, definitely. And through the different state universities and through this sense of exposure, we're talking about the new republic going beyond the uh, conventional tracks. <clears throat> uh, we're talking about the new republic that is uh, actually uh, uh, choosing the fast track for uh, talking about uh, the global market, to addressing the global market. We're talking about the youth uh, uh, with such a wide range right. of uh, mm -hmm. the future-based programs. 
this sense of exposure, right. we really did need this sense of exposure because as we both know, uh, right. many ha would have been registered abroad for studying abroad. Now, today there is no need because right. y you right. do have this right. Uh, right. international uh, yes. uh, caliber oriented right. universities present. Right. Right. So right. Uh, how do you see that? How do you, and, and how do you see the sense of exposure? How is it beneficial in your opinion? It's very beneficial as a matter of fact for mm -hmm. everyone in the country. It's yeah. very beneficial for, for the marketing strategy as well for the country. It's beneficial also for high quality of education. We are looking for quality of education, as we said before. We are looking for untraditional ways, and if we just think about that, Irene, then we can just understand how important it is to bring the international calibers, mm -hmm. the international experts to our country, and also at the same time sending our calibers outside. In this way, by having such exchanging program, I do remember um, probably President Sadat before, he said that one of the, the strategic approaches that Egypt is keen on at that time during the 70s of the last century to have that sense of exchanging programs. So I think that by having that sense of exchanging experiences among different countries, that can help at the end. Mm -hmm. That can help to move forward, that mm -hmm. can help to open new ideas and to create that sense of investment and to have another different style of job opportunities. And this is what our youth are looking for today, which is international opportunities um, exposed to, to the global front. And I think that this is the core point of education at the end. Yes, uh, a flashback also since we are uh, still watching excerpts from uh, one of the most important sessions at the uh, World Youth Forum uh, entitled Ask the President. Well, uh, the president here was also in those sessions very much keen in raising the uh, level of the political awareness right. uh, for Egypt's youth. It's very important. Uh, we're a country that are fighting terrorism through a sense of development. Right. By developing more, by right. having more stories of success, right. by um, uh, preparing our youth for the future. Right. And this is very important, how we are working today on raising the level of awareness of our youth. They have right. to understand what is happening and right. also right. the different challenges that we are facing uh, regionally and also globally. Right. Uh, as you said, awareness. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a very critical word. Um, and I think that by having um, uh, training programs, by making, um, by making the students exposed to different experiences, local experiences and international experiences, uh, by helping them to apply for different uh, scholarship programs as well. I think that by having such approaches and such strategies, um, they can build that sense of awareness. When it comes to awareness, then we have to understand what is our identity, first of all, and we have to understand the historical, the geographical, the cultural, the social, the religious backgrounds of the country. If we just read, if we're just exposed to such a knowledge, then I think in this way we can build the first step and the first cornerstone for the concept of uh, the right awareness. Yes. Uh, defeating terrorism is requiring uh, <clears throat> prioritizing, of course, certain files, as I said, like, uh, right. like uh, development right. and uh, also education. Right. Right. So uh, education and <clears throat> the president is focusing on the fact that uh, it is quite important to confront uh, extremism and terrorism, not only at the security level, but also at the level of development. That's very the, true. The vision of 2030. There is no question about mm -hmm. that, that there is a strong connection between education and sustainable development. In every aspect, uh, when it comes to the economic development, when it comes also to the uh, probably intellectual government um, um, development as well. So I think that by having that sense of um, exposed to different experiences, um, by putting unusual programs in order to build an, a new approach for the development, because this is what we are just trying to do, which is um, making education as a way in order to 
create job opportunities and also to help at the end for developing um, the resources of the country. That's why today we have in universities one of the strategic function, function of any college or any university today uh, just to apply unusual research programs in order to help the society, mm -hmm. in order to convey knowledge to the society, in order to help people in the society to have different style of life and probably this is the core point of connecting education with sustainable development. Yes, uh, in every classroom there are always outstanding students, those who uh, uh, come up with uh, brilliant ideas right. that we can work on. How are we taking good care of those creative students, the uh, <coughs> outstanding students, I the, think, the responsibility <coughs> of professors? Right, right. I think, case. yes. Part of the responsibility mm -hmm. are actually on the shoulders of the professors. Mm -hmm. Because this, um, I guess that this is the direct and the transparent uh, connection between the leaders of the education process in the country and the students on the other hand. So I think that by having such a direct and open dialogue between the professors and the students, that can really help by helping the students to apply for different programs, by supporting, motivating, and encouraging them, by pushing them to have unusual and creative ways. I think that this is the best way um, to preserve, to keep, and to explore the genius and the creative students as well. Yes, uh, there is also the culture of volunteering, right. helping uh, students to explore more opportunities in right. their community right. uh, is also uh, very important. Right. Uh, this in addition to providing them with all the skills and knowledge in that respect. How can we provide mm -hmm. incentives, in your opinion, right. for the youth today to share, to right. let this be part of their uh, routine life? Right. I think that read something very important that I keep on talking about this point, mm -hmm. the role model. Mm -hmm. We should actually provide the students and the new generations role models in all fields. Yeah. They are looking for that. They are looking for the positive ambience. They are looking for the positive attitude. They would like to find a sense of hope, as you said at the beginning of our talk today. And I think that by having that sense of pushing, encouraging, motivating, and giving incentives, um, building a bright full future for them, they can actually, at the end, they can see something happening on the ground. Uh, let me just tell you that um, um, we remember what a lot of leaders talked about that before. It's all about the hope and education and helping the, the, uh, the generations in order to move the country. And look to different examples in Asia, for example. Yeah. A country like Japan, a country like South Korea and Singapore. All of such countries, they started the first step of development by having a genuine and unusual and a creative and innovative ways inside education systems. Yes, definitely. Uh, there is, of course, a strategic vision for <clears throat> education for the country for the year 2030 uh, that, that was adopted back in 2016. It mainly seeks to expand also uh, the technical as well as the vocational uh, education and vocational training. Right. Uh, this is also a very important aspect because we need uh, right. the calibers who uh, had graduated with the strong points and strength in vocational training. That's very true and that's mm -hmm. why today our syllabi are different from the past. It's yeah. not all about the theories, it's not all about the traditional ways, but it's more about something different, something related to changing the culture of the people today for the vocational education, for the technical education, for a different and a new style of education as well. Today, as I said before, I have a lot of students today that they are still in the undergraduate uh, stage, undergraduate levels in the universities, and they are working from their homes, and they are working in a, a new, different style of jobs, like, for example, video editing, like, for example, software application designers, and all of these um, unusual concepts of job opportunities that was not in the past, but today we can just see that. And by the way, they gain a lot of money. So this is the point that we are talking about, which is having a new and a different way of thinking, different way of attitude in order to help them to go for another different style of education to help themselves 
and to help the society as well. Yes, uh, definitely. Ho hopefully uh, tomorrow is another day and uh, it has been a pleasure having you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdetawa, Professor at Minofea University and uh, we talk together the education file and uh, thinking out of the box, talking out of the box and mainly talking about youth, you know, uh, the, the interview concerning youth is always brilliant and optimistic. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Dari, for having me. Thank you. And I thank you, dear viewers, for joining us. That was Wednesday Debate Live, and I'm Taghirit Hassin. Many thanks for watching.